Hello, this is a trade site trade recap. I wanted to talk about volume in the markets and how important they are for our trading success. I think it's a very important lesson we can see just from this week alone. So I wanted to first talk about volume and uh, what it means and then sort of look at the difference between how the market works when volume is good versus how it works when volume is not so great. So this is a look at the NASDAQ uh, volume and 15 minute bars going the back the last four or five days or so. And what you can see on here is that this is today, Wednesday, uh, April 10th, 2013. And you can see that by the end of the day, we had gotten about 1.7 billion shares on the NASDAQ. Now that's, that's kind of the minimum we like to see from a trading perspective. Uh, there's a variety of reasons for that. Uh, they say about seven, 800 million shares a day on the NASDAQ. It's just computerized back and forth trading between firms and market makers and you know, a lot of junk that really doesn't add up to much in the market. So it's really from that point above that you really start to get count the actual volume that's going on in the market. So when you get a 1.7 billion share day, you've got about a billion shares of real volume. And you know it's a big difference. I mean, if you get to 2 billion shares, which we really like to see, that means you got about 1.3 or so, maybe 1.4 of, of real volume. But if you get days like Tuesday and Monday, Monday set a three-year low for uh, volume in the markets in on a non-holiday, non-end-of-year environment. What I mean by that is, you know, take out the day after Thanksgiving, take out a day where maybe the banks are closed but the stock market's open, uh, take out the last week of the year between Christmas and New Year's where nobody's trading, you know, take out a day maybe where 4th of July is a Thursday and then Friday is kind of a waste of time. And if you ignore those days, it was the lightest volume day in a long time. Now, a lot of reasons for that, we're not gonna get into those right now, but the problem is, when you don't have good volume in the market, you don't have a lot of movement, and that means the technical action is poor, makes it harder for us to make money trading stocks. And uh, as you can see on Monday, we only got to about 1.25 billion shares on the NASDAQ. On Tuesday, we hit about 1.4, it was really 1.3 and a half. Uh, these are real poor numbers. I mean, when you consider seven to 800 million of it is just that computerized trading, 1.25 is barely 450 million shares traded for real volume. And that makes a significant difference. And so even though you may see some range in the market, the futures themselves uh, still had a move. And let me go ahead and pull that up and show you what I mean by that. Here's the uh, S&P uh, uh, E-mini futures and 15 minute bars. And you can see that over the last four days, we've actually had a run in the market. We gapped down back on Thursday, on Friday with the uh, unemployment data that everybody thought was gonna be the end of the world. Uh, and then kind of moved up a little bit on that on Friday. It wasn't tremendous volume. Here's that Monday where we just had the lightest volume day of the year. And all we did with that was reach up and fill the gap that we had not filled from Friday. And then Tuesday, kind of a flat opening and, and a little bump up, but you know, traded a little bit of range still. I mean, there's, it's not completely flat. We've seen a lot of flatter days. And then on Wednesday with the Fed minutes getting released early, we gapped up and ran early and then dead flat in the afternoon. So, you know, what you're seeing here is that we're still trading some volume. We've had a, 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 a decent move, 50 points or so on the S&P from the open on Thursday uh, and then over the course of four days. But a lot of it really, really light on volume for stocks. And so the difference is that whereas Monday and Tuesday, it's a little bit trickier to find stock picks. Uh, Wednesday was much more interesting. And let me show you how that really played out and why it's so important to gauge that volume early on and really understand what it looks like. So let's take a look at what happened uh, with our stock picks on Wednesday. And keep in mind, as you can see from the futures, market gapped up a little and ran. So market direction, the way we measure it, was green the entire session. All right, so we're gonna look at some of the picks. Now we give two types of picks off the stock report. We have uh, the picks that are our daily chart picks. These are posted the night before for people to use off of the daily charts. For example, uh, our top pick is BLMN long over that 19 level. You can see this thing ran from 19 all the way to 20 during the course of the day uh, on uh, Wednesday. Uh, we also had Intel long at uh, 2204. Now Intel's a stock we don't pick a lot anymore. It doesn't move much, but we had a really nice technical trigger on the daily chart and at least gave us, provided us with something real easy to get in and out of Intel all you want. Uh, call, C-A-L-L, -L, another one. Worked a little bit, but never put you in any danger at all uh, as the market rallied. Uh, an ONNN, another one off the report, an $8 stock that did a little something as well. And remember, the market was kind of flat in the afternoon, so these moves uh, working when they're going to work. Now, we've got uh, some intraday calls. These are calls that we make based on intraday patterns and whatnot. And uh, so we'll go ahead and jump to uh, the Goldman Sachs, which was an intraday call long over the first five minutes of trade. And that one worked really well for us. Uh, we've got uh, Google, uh, it was a nice breakout, look at this, the two-day 
price break out here at over uh, 783.75, if I recall. And that one obviously worked for uh, about eight points or so. Uh, Netflix, we have a short idea. Now keep in mind, our trade ideas that we post uh, you know, they're designed to be taken when you've got market directional support. So there was a nice setup in Netflix to the downside. It actually worked for almost a point, but it really wasn't the direction of the market. So that's really not a trade that you want to take. Same thing happened in Best Buy. Here's a trade that worked great. It was a short idea. Uh, and you can see that we, uh, you know, it, it definitely worked. But uh, again, the market direction was really green at the time. Let's take a look at uh, Amgen. Look at this nice trade in Amgen, 106.30. I think ran all the way up to 108.32 two points on Amgen for the session. Uh, GILD, uh, again, another biotech. And look how this thing works from uh, 4905 all the way up almost to 50, you know, so a great move there. So, now again, the key with these plays is that they work because there's volume in the market. And the days where there was no volume, you know, just take a look at this GILD chart, for example. Look how flat it was yesterday. And look at the others. I mean, they're all really flat. So even though we had a range, if you look back at those futures, they did move up. But there was just sort of a drift higher. There were, the technical moves were poor, especially for futures calls. But the actual uh, stock action in those days, Monday and Tuesday, was not very exciting, right? But meanwhile, when you get to Wednesday and you get some volume in the market, suddenly these stocks really start to move a little bit better. So again, it's really important. Look at this. Here's Google one more time. The day that this market was up uh, on Tuesday, but volume was uh, only 1.3 billion shares. And look at Google kind of flat all day. But here's throw a little volume in the market and suddenly Google gets a valid trigger and an eight point move. Very important to un analyze and understand what volume is, what it means for the market. If you want to make money, you cannot force trades in a dead market. And by dead, I don't necessarily mean that there's no movement because sometimes the market will move when it's thin. I mean a dead market, meaning lack of volume and nobody trading. Have a great night. We'll see you in the lab.